it is a it's a big topic and there are a lot of people who who inquire about it you know who have thoughts um men and women and i think our black women our sisters are concerned about us you know it it, it makes sense to be in that space What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am Thomas L. Troutman, and welcome to another episode of Real Talk, the podcast. Now listen, today's episode is going to be deep. So, put your seatbelt on. We're going to start to unpack this thing. And um, man, it's it's a subject that I can relate to so intimately. So, Let's get into it. Uh, Smash that subscribe button right now. Sit back, relax, enjoy. Hey, you might be like me and you watch podcasts or listen to them. Now, listen, if you're listening and you're driving, you know, maybe you're on Spotify or whatever, please don't do what I am about to suggest, okay? But if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or wherever, Grab a pen, grab a pad, a pencil. You might want to take some notes. You might have some questions. You can also drop them down in the comments below. So we'll get into this. Um, But before we jump into today's topic, though, check in. Where are you tuning in from? Drop your city, man. Drop your country. Drop your state. Maybe you don't want nobody to know what like city and state you live in, but tell me where you're tuning in from. You know, I have traveled the world. I love to meet new people from all over the world. So, hey, if you're overseas, if you're in Japan, shout out to Japan, shout out to Germany, shout out to South Africa, uh, shout out to Europe, to wherever you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, I crack myself up. Y'all know I like to laugh and I'm going to laugh a lot. Um, but anyway, man, whatever way you're watching um, or listening, be it YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Amazon, um, maybe you're seeing a little piece of this on Instagram. What's up, IG? Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Um, you can hit the follow button on Instagram or on Facebook. And share this video with a friend, especially if you watch all the way or listen all the way to the end and you feel like you've been impacted in some way. Share this because we are building a community together. You know, we are certainly going to get real and um, really unpack every topic as a team. So let's jump into it. Today, um, this came from a good friend of mine, this it, this uh, topic, and it really hit me. I mean, um, yesterday I put out a post, or maybe it was earlier today, but uh, I put out a post on my Instagram and I said, hey, what topics do you want to cover on Real Talk? And this was one of the first ones that came into my DM. So black men, what up though what's up uh let's talk right now i'm gonna do a few of these episodes um really targeted to my my brothers out there because i am a black man that is my experience that is my life and so i can attest to a lot of things that we experience and you know with this particular series because this will be a series this i'm telling y'all this is probably going to be like three or four parts this particular topic uh but you know black men let's talk will be an ongoing thing with different subject matters but we are talking mental and emotional health. It is a it's a big topic and there are a lot of people who who inquire about it, you know, who have thoughts um men and women and I think our black women, our sisters are concerned about us. You know, it it, it makes sense to be in that space. But I want to kick this conversation off with a quote from Dr. Howard C. Stevenson, PhD. He is the director of the Racial Empowerment Collaborative at the University of Pennsylvania. And here is what he had to say. We should place less emphasis on whether black men are resistant to therapy and more on understanding the context in which they already feel comfortable talking about their feelings and traumas. If a black man is able to find a treatment that is culturally responsive, that he understands 
and that embraces the uniqueness of his difference, he is more likely to use that service. I agree. And the reason that I wanted to start the conversation with that quote is because um, I'm a little guilty of the accusation. I am one who used to just in general, but especially for black men, used to be like, man, like, why are you so resistant or why don't you go to therapy? And I mean, some, some, some of those questions They've come from a place of understanding what therapy can do for someone, especially when they're dealing with depression, when they're dealing with anxiety, and they don't know how to articulate, regulate, or overcome these deep, unresolved traumas. And, you know, in my head for a while, I'm like, bruh, just go to therapy. It is such a simple thing. It is so helpful. But I recognize as I've progressed on my journey and as I've grown myself that that takes a lot of courage and it takes a level of, I mean, there, there's a lot of components, a lot of variables that are involved with going to therapy or, excuse me, I turned the volume of my headphones down because, man, they was loud. But, um, you know, going, going to therapy and that kind of thing, like, it is something that everybody isn't going to do. And then as I was reading and researching some of the just statistics regarding mental health, uh, m- m- mental health for minority and black men, you know, specifically um, black and Hispanic men, there was this stuff that was just like blowing my mind. And we'll, we'll unpack that um, a little bit later in the episode. But what I recognize when it comes to therapy or even just men in general, but definitely black men expressing themselves emotionally is uh, they don't always know that they're responding and navigating through life based off of their unresolved trauma. And I found this out just over the last two or three years. Praise God, the most high God creator of all things that he has redeemed and restored and transformed me from, from um, you know, just certain experiences and, and certain strongholds that I used to deal with, especially when it comes to unresolved trauma, when it comes to these bits of being enraged or angry or sad or depressed or suicidal, all of these things I have been in the past. Um, a lot of times you don't recognize that you are just literally enslaved like it's a, it's a ball and chain to your unresolved trauma to the things that that trigger you and think about this you know 30 years ago or 40 years ago a lot of these buzzwords and a lot of this research and the results of research weren't even a thing like who in you know 93 or 94 was talking about triggers who really understood that the impact of therapy or the impact of expression, emotional and mental health, like that wasn't even a a, a large conversation amongst our community. And, you know, I want to put this disclaimer on this episode because we are going to unpack some just straight up facts, but this is not so much a race thing or not just about um, you know, a, a black man or black men not being able to express themselves emotionally or really deal with their mental health. Um, I mean, it's a, it, it's for men in general. But as I said in the beginning of this, like my experience is that of a young black man living in America. And that experience comes with trauma that is in our DNA. You know, I I think what has given me grace for uh, a lot of men who don't find that place of vulnerability easy to access is just knowing where I came from. And then being in a unique situation where I have been able to learn where those characteristics were developed in me and where they were projected from because of the experiences that I've had specifically with men that I've looked up to, men that I have been inspired by and encouraged by, especially men in my family and or who are in close proximity to family, like they could could be my family because they've, you know, practically raised me. But what I've been able to understand and what I've become aware of is patterns, systems, reactions and responses from unresolved trauma, right? And I want to be very clear, and I'll talk about this in in more detail at another time, but reactions and responses are absolutely two different 
things, right? And reacting is typically from a place of emotions. And some people believe that they're not emotional. They believe that they start with logic and rationale and they kind of sit their emotions aside. I've been that person many times. And, um, you know, sometimes I, I, I still struggle in moments to uh, to separate my emotions from the logical and rational uh, reaction, right? Sometimes I have reacted out of my emotions, right? So that's reactions. That is almost always emotionally uh, um, influenced, right? Response, right? When you respond to something or to someone, you have to take a moment, right? If someone asks you a question, you don't just answer the question right away. You take a beat or a few to really think about a response. And recognizing, like I said, that, that uh, you know, I've been able to identify pattern systems, reactions, and responses to unresolved trauma. Um, and so I won't, you know, disclose any, any names or who these people are in my life, but um, I, I've watched people who really poured into me things like humility and integrity and keeping your word and, you know, just these things that men should seek to achieve and and should you know the, the bar that should be set for for a man to become just that a man but i recognize these patterns that i used to just like I, I was in submission to if you will came from those people that i looked up to so yes they taught me about humility and they taught me about integrity keeping your word etc but what I've recognized being healed from a lot of those things and seeing myself in these people that I've looked up to, right? Um, I start to recognize that a big part of just the emotional and mental health um, detachment for Black men is because of just this masculine ideology. And this ideology, right? This, these, These just... Um, philosophies of how men should be or how we have been taught to behave, men in general, but especially black men, um, excuse me, it, it really, it really plays a part in how emotionally available we are and how much we, we actually seek to, to resolve trauma or, or not. You know, like a lot of us and you can drop in the comments um, if you've had this experience, but a lot of us just go through our lives. We are around similar people with similar beliefs. Um, and I've been around a lot of of men, a lot of black men, you know, acquaintances and friends who think from this place of ideology. So I'm going to just really start to unpack a few more things regarding that very specific part of what I'm uh, of what I'm talking about when it comes to emotional health when it comes to men's emotional health right so men's tendency to delay health help seeking is largely attributed to or attributed to masculinity but findings scarcely focus on african american men who face additional race related help seeking barriers right so that first piece, like the former, men's tendency to delay health help seeking is largely uh, uh, attributed to masculinity. Definitely have been th that man. OK, like don't really like to go to the doctor. Don't like medicine. I mean, I don't like medicine anyway, because there's so many ways to 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 stay healthy or to get healthy, get over colds and get over sicknesses through food, through what you drink, through the, the medicine in your environment. Whole nother topic for a whole different day, but make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. Um, but it's the, it's the back end of that, right? Finding scarcely focus on African-American men who face additional race-related help-seeking barriers because of the, the just think about the ancestrally or the ancestral um, um, challenges that we faced as black men. You know, I mean, we talk about slavery, we talk about the, the uh, civil rights movement, but those were significant um, um, patterns that were formed in our DNA as black men, right? I know when I see a police officer driving down the highway or in the streets, like, I know that I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm going to speed limit. I have my seatbelt on. I'm not on my phone. But there is something in me to this day that is 
uncomfortable when I see a police car or a police officer walking. Not because I've had any bad interactions with police, but because of that, that, you know, when you think about what the slave masters and you think about the, the police brutality that's been happening for decades and is more televised, right? Because of social media, like those things are something that we as black men think about on the regular basis, because, the you know, when, when you think about some of these people who have been unalived by police officers and their records are clean. These were, you know, some of them may have been educators or community activists. Like anything could happen to me as a black man just chilling, looking the way that I do. Right. And when you think about the contribution of masculinity, right, to men's health care, and I'm reading from my notes. Um, and again, like I said, I'll drop these articles uh, in, in the description box below. But these are just points that are really that have been helpful for me to understand why most black men don't want to go get help for the emotional things that they do. They just endure, right? So the, contribu the contribution of masculinity to men's health care use has gained increased public health interest, which is excellent to me, right? Because if th there are people in that field of um, um, public health, of, of mental health, and their interest has been sparked or increased because of the masculinity, con or you know, the, the contribution of masculinity, that is progress. Would you agree? Type yes in the comments if you would agree. Right. However, and this is the part when I when it would like as 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 we talk about this, like I said, it's going to take some time to unpack the full spectrum. And I want to get some other opinions. Right. And I'll talk about that at the end of the episode, because if you want to chime in on this conversation or any of the conversations that we have on Real Talk, the podcast, but especially this one, um, I'm going to have something for you at the end of this episode where you can give me your feedback. The, well, just getting back to making my point. This, this part right here is is one of the just like my mind is blown moments because in every article or every, you know, citation from the main article that I went to, this is something that is talked about on the regular basis. And this has been going on for many years as well. Right. So the contribution of uh, masculinity to men's health care uh, use has gained increased public health interest. However, listen to this, right? Few studies have examined this association among African-American men who delay health care more often, define masculinity differently, and report higher levels of medical mistrust than non-Hispanic white men, right? Like, let me just run that back. <laughs> this part right here, right? Who delay health care more often, define masculinity differently, and report higher levels of medical mistrust in non-Hispanic white men. Why is that? Well, we're going to continue on with the reading because the next thing is going to unpack that. And then I'm just going to kind of give you my feedback because when I think about mental health in general, I will say this, and, and I'll, talk, I'll talk about it a little bit more as a uh, conclusion to this episode, but I will say this now because it's on my heart. Um, I've experienced so much trauma, so much trauma. It'll make your mouth drop, right? But how many other black men have experienced the same amount of trauma from different circumstances? But the thing that I, I know for a fact that helps to transition us as people, and this is not just for the men, this is for the ladies too, this is for the women too, but is really understanding that you have the power to shift and change your mindset. And a lot of the things that we experience, it is a like we experience our life twice, once in our mind and then once in the reality. And the reality is what we have created. And so the way that I've been able to heal through a lot of these things is because of my mindset a healthy mindset. And I'll talk about that. Um, like we're going to really unpack mindset, like a healthy mindset, uh, will be like next episode or, you know, coming soon, because that was another topic that I received is let's talk about healthy mindsets, but you actually have the power to change your circumstances, change the trajectory of your life from where it is right now to a, a, like a total 180 or 360, you know, 360s can spiral, but like turning away from where you are in your mind right now. In your life right now, in your circumstances, you have the power. But 
let's get back to this article, right? So conformity to traditional masculine gender norms may deter men's help seeking and or impact the services men engage. Despite pro-life rating research, current evidence has not been evaluated systematically. This review summarizes findings related to the role of masculinity on men's help seeking for depression, right? Um, And this is from a different part of an article, but I think these things go hand in hand. Black people are less likely to receive guideline consistent care or to be included in mental health research. Now, I'm not doing this episode for controversy, but I think that that makes so much sense to why we as black men often deal with these emotional ins- or emotionally unstable responses to our life or the lack thereof right you know we know about the flight or fight response and i know a lot of black men who either fight and they go straight to defense they go straight to all of the, the achievements and i make this amount of money and i do this for my children right but the 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 flight people just shut down okay i'm a mixture of of, of both um but i've learned how to regulate my emotions right which i mentioned before but also um i've learned how to listen a little bit more to understand but the the people who shut down, you know, and I've experienced this quite a bit, is probably because they don't really know how to deal with um, the the emotional conversations that make them anxious, that make them unsure of how to respond. And a lot of this comes from mistrust, right? And going back to just this point, Black people are less likely to receive guideline consistent care or to be included in mental health research, Right. And so the the next question that kind of came up for me and you could have the same question, but um, not like like if you have other questions, please drop them down. Or if you have other points or things that you want to chime in, like drop those in the comments, because I'm going to be looking at that comment section to or comment section to just expand on this, because remember, this is just part one. We are going to go uh, so much more in depth with this conversation. But um, the, the question that that this led me to understanding that we're not receiving consistent care or being included in mental health research was, uh, the, the, or the question is, how how are we seeking help or are we seeking mental health help as black men? And, you know, you say, why or why not? Like, I have some whys or, um, you know, a theory based off of just some of the statistics that we are going to dive into right now. Right. Um, But this this was very interesting to me. And, you know, though, though the conversation is specifically about black men and about us seeking emotional and mental health. um, What's the word? There is a word I'm looking for. Interventions, right? But check this out. This is probably a part of the reason why. One, knowing that a lot of research that's being done, whether it be by um, hospitals or college universities, are not including African Americans in their mental health research. So if you're not including them, how could they possibly even seek out the help because you don't know the details of where this emotional detachment is stemming from, right? So black men are not receiving the help they need for these problems, right? And and this is specifically talking about the masculinity and talking about uh, really the amount of resources available, which I'll I'll put that on the back burner for a second. But black men are are not receiving the help that they need for these problems. For example, only 26.4 of black and Hispanic men ages 18 to 44 who experience daily feelings of anxiety or depression were likely to have used mental health services compared with 45.4% of non-Hispanic white men with the same feelings. 
When black men do seek help and would prefer a same race provider, it can be difficult finding black psychologists, right? This is the part that really blew my mind. And yeah, listen, I'm just going to finish this sentence, right? It can be difficult finding black psychologists since they make up only about 4% of the doctoral level psychology workforce. Now, you think about how many psychologists, psychiatrists, like counselors of mental health at the doctoral level. Like there, there are so many. I mean, you probably have a hundred practices in a 50 mile radius to where you live right now. But for four percent of those people to be non Hispanic or, 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 or to be, um, you know, black or Hispanic or let's just call it minority doctors, that is that is a big issue to me. And I think that kind of circles to a, a slightly different conversation, but not so much because when you think about just a lot of black people, black families, black men um, live right at or below the poverty line. And I mean, some of that has to do with the, uh, you know, their region, their geographical location. But I know from my own personal experiences, some of these depressive episodes or anxiety ridden episodes that I've experienced on my life journey, just as a man, have stemmed from not having the finances to be able to live the life that I've desired. You know, that is shifting, glory to God. But how many people deal with that? How many people are just in survival mode because they haven't been educated or they don't have these resources or they reject the resources, but it started to make more sense and it's starting to make more sense to me why people don't go or why black men specifically, but people in general too, don't go and seek out professional health because I could sit down with um, a, a, a white man or a white woman and talk about my experiences, talk about what it is that I'm going through in a therapy session, but how much would that person be able to really relate to me? Now, what I won't knock is the amount of education and the amount of time they spent to learn, um, you know, the, these these formulas uh, regarding the, the human psyche, right? Because they're going to be able to provide tools. They're going to be able to provide ways to regulate these emotional disturbances like that I will give but what uh, and then this is no offense to anyone who is not a, a black man or um, of the African-American race or descent right but how much could this person that is not of my race really relate to what it is that I'm sharing with them like even if they've grown up in the same environments in the same city in the same schools like they've had some of the circumstantial and environmental experiences but even still they're light years ahead right now I will say this to everyone listening the the there is no excuse for us as a a nation as as black men and women, to not go and educate ourselves. I mean, there is far too many resources for us to keep keep saying that we haven't been educated or I don't know how money works or I don't know about this thing. I don't know about, like, stop being lazy, bro. Pick up a book. Like, there's YouTube. There, and, and this is not to judge anyone, but I hear a lot of excuses. Some of them my, I used to make myself. But how can you actually progress if you yourself don't go and start to educate yourself about the things you don't understand? Right? Yeah, that part. Jumping back into answering kind of this question, like, uh, are we actively seeking help? Why or why not? Well, here, here's another why not and this is something that we we have to just come together in, in community and and really change the vibration and the energy in uh, in our country for sure here in, in uh, the United States, but around the world, we have to change the frequency. 
This conversation will certainly continue in parts two and three, maybe even four. If you'd like to chime in on this conversation, I want you to make a video. You know, 30 seconds, one minute, it could be longer, or you can, you know, drop in the comments, especially on IG. I spend a lot of my time on Instagram. When you post with your question, with your feedback, with your summary, with whatever it is um, to be a part of the conversation, I want you to tag me, right? At Thomas L. Troutman, and that's at Thomas L. Troutman on all social media, and then invite Real Talk, the podcast, as a collaborator on your post. And, um, We'll post them. And I definitely am going to review and reach out and continue the conversation. But tag me at Thomas L. Troutman. Invite Real Talk dot the podcast as at Real Talk period the podcast. Invite us as a, a collaborator um, and use the hashtag Real Talk the podcast and hashtag Let's Get Real. Right. So chime into the conversation, especially my black brothers. I want to hear your your perspective, your point of view. But ladies, I want to hear from you, too. Like I want to hear from the women just as much as the men, because what I want to know is how intervention for black mental health or black men in their mental health. How is that affecting you and what solutions do you have or what things do you wish that you could say to the black men in your life that will encourage them or will let us know, hey, this is what we would like for you. This is how we can support, right? So to uh, jump into it, like let's let's continue this conversation. I've had a few people reach out to be guests on the show. Y'all, I'm super lit because we got, yeah, we, we got some guests that, um, you know, that I'm working to get on the show right now. But if you would like to be a guest on Real Talk to Podcast at any point, click the link in the description or around the video, or it, it'll be in my bio. It's definitely in the Real Talk, the podcast bio. But there's a sign-up form. And, you know, you if you want to be a guest, fill out that form. Um, you know, it's a few, like, I want to know what are the top three topics that you would like to discuss on your episode and to get to know you. And this is not just for artists, but this is for anyone who would like to be on, on Real Talk, the par- podcast. Now, we'll be clear. Everybody is not going to get to come on to the show. Um, Excuse me. And, you know, we'll break this down into seasons and we're still in development. But I definitely want you to submit a form if you'd like to be a guest on the podcast. The link is in the description box below in my bio in the Real Talk the uh, podcast bio. Um, So, yeah, you want to be a guest? Sign up. Let me know. We'll see what we can make happen. I appreciate you for tuning in to Real Talk, the podcast. This is episode two. Make sure you like, you comment, subscribe, follow, drop them topics in the comments. What else do you want to talk about? I mean, I know this is a hefty uh, conversation, but what else do you want to talk about? You know, every every subject is not going to be super deep and, you know, uh, super emotional. Some of them are going to be super fun. Some of them are going to have nothing to do with the depth of, you know, intellect. But uh, what are the topics that you'd like to discuss? We got some super dope ones coming up. Um, Healthy mindset is one. Uh, I got another one that I like, yeah, that mug might get recorded this week. But um, how to navigate friendships as an adult? Like, whoo, man. I got so much to say about that one. But those are some of the, uh, the the subjects that are coming up on the show. And that's it. I love y'all. I am Thomas L. Troutman. Make sure you follow me on all social media. That is at Thomas L. Troutman. And follow us, Real Talk the Podcast, on IG, on Facebook, Real Talk dot the podcast link is in the description box or somewhere around this video wherever you are watching y'all we gonna keep unpacking and i love it let's get real together let's go man yeah